so funny. Share the joke. Share the joke with us. Yes, she's mentioned. So I'm just going to recite something different and we'll see how it goes, okay? Ya ma'ashar al jin, ya ma'ashar al jin, ya ma'ashar al jin, 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 jin. I just want to let you all know that I'm truly sorry about everything. And after speaking to Ustad Moino, and my family, I've decided that I want to tell you all the truth. I can confirm that the statement below is the truth. And about Hassanat saying that he was an agnostic, and he coerced me and his other wives into believing that we were agnostics too throughout some parts of our marriage. I'll be clarifying other claims soon. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. How you guys doing? Here on the Dean Show Sheikh. Kareem Abu Zaid, how you doing? Very good, how you doing? How you been? Alhamdulillah. How you and we got to my right here. Hey, Mohammed alaykum. Hijab. Assalamu alaikum, how you doing? How you doing? How you been? I'm good. Ha ha have, have, have we made the connection here? Yeah. Sheikh yeah. Abu uh, Kareem Zaid and uh, Mohammed Hijab. Oh, I've seen him before on the Dean Show. He yes. had a good episode on um, the Shi'i, Shi'i Sunni episode, is that correct? Am yeah, I yeah. Am I getting it right? Yeah, how you doing, Muhammad? Alhamdulillah, how's it going? Did you see me good? Yeah, yeah. I watched some of that debate with uh, Wood, it was nice. Alhamdulillah, if it was good. Yeah, yeah, Alhamdulillah. I'll try and make the of that one, inshallah. May Allah accept from you, Rabbil Alameen. So we're, we're, we're trying to uh, derive, obviously there was a, a big, uh, some people call it an in infiltration, some people call it, uh, you know, major hypocrisy, hypocrisy within uh, a, a group that infiltrated the, the Muslims, uh, so many different things being turned around. You're actually on the ground, you've spoken a lot about this, we want to kind of analyze it and, and hopefully derive some benefits so we can go ahead and and, and, and share some of the things that can benefit the, the community not to fall in a lot of these traps again. So what, what do you think, Shay? Should we let uh, Mohammed Hijab kind of bring us up to speed on what's going on? Uh, Absolutely. He's yeah. uh, he this, uh, the Dean Show uh, UK. Yeah, Fill us in on the ground. <laughs> so, so the situation is you had two very famous Instagrammers. Uh, can we mention their names? He's asking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 go yeah, ahead. Yeah. So one of them was called Hassanat, the other one was called Omar Abdullah, yeah? And um, they, they appeared on Instagram with um, with basically a lot of followers, like one of them had half a million and the other one had, I think, almost a million or 800,000 followers. And so obviously, uh, the, you know, their idea was just to show their life, you know, how they're living their lives. One of them was Munaqaba, the other one was Muldahi, he had a beard, and the other one was Munaqaba and things like that. So um, they were showing their lives and stuff like that. And... A bit of their behavior was frivolous, capricious. You know, some people would tell them off because they were just joking around. There was no serious, um, you know, kind of flavor to, the, to what they were doing. But no one really bad an eyelid in terms of, you know, going down the route of are they infiltrators or anything like that. But then evidence started to emerge that those individuals were, were actually um, were, were doing certain shady things, let's say, right? Um, and there were lots of accusations that were put forward, but at this stage, no one had any solid shari evidence. However, then the situation started to progress and mature, and many witnesses came forward, many adul um, witnesses, uh, Muslim witnesses with good character that have no reason to lie about the situation, said that this individual has um, actually apostated from Islam, uh, one of the individuals that was in, in their relationship, the man, and that he actually got his wife to apostate from Islam as well, that she left Islam. But when they left Islam, they would continue wearing their garments. So, for example, the woman would wear her niqab and so on, and the man would, you know, still continue to recite Quran, and they would continue their services. They would do ruqya, ruqya sharia on the people, which is reading the Quran on people to get the jinn out and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and so what happened was, you know, there was an account, another uh, an, another account, an Instagram account, which was uh, which was of a, of this uh, of some woman basically, and there had been some women that knew Um Abdullah, the woman with the naqab, and how she looked like underneath the naqab, and, she, and they said, look, 
this is the same woman, you know, that is on this account. And on the other account, it was a woman that was going clubbing, nightclubs with other men, uh, doing all kinds of things. So we, there was that accusation. There was that accusation. So, so how could that be that person? So, uh, and how could that person be someone's muraqaba, but at the same time, and she's married, but at the same time she's with other men in pictures, rappers and famous people going to clubs uh, and these things. So it became very big fitna. Uh, and another layer to this fitna was the fact that they collected 300,000 sterling pounds for Rohingya. And uh, the, uh, 300,000 pounds, uh, which uh, to this day we don't know of the charity, because in England we have the Charity Commission, which is the overseeing body, which kind of sees all the charities. And um, the Charity Commission froze the money, them or the government, they froze the money, the £300,000. Now, we don't know which charity... ...using Just Giving, or one of the fundraising websites. And we don't know what charity they were going to deliver that, char that, that money with. So the government froze the money in the account. The issue is there is that the government actually did refund some of the money of the people, but some people paid zakat with that money, you know, because they, because you know it's, it's, a, it's a catable kind of thing to pay, uh, and so they messed up people's zakat, they messed up they messed up people's finances, they took three hundred thousand pounds, which we don't even know what, where they put it yet in. They they were living double lives, and so recently what happened is we had communications with uh, with them and with organisations that were working with them. Though we are independent ourselves, we we're kind of um, undertaking a journalistic capacity, and we spoke to those individuals, and we found uh, that the best way, because the evidence was so heavy, that the girl herself, Um Abdullah, wanted to own terms, then have us make the we kind of bring this evidence out to show and expose you and stuff like that. So what happened was that she made the confession in her own terms, and she put this online. So she confessed that they were living double lives. She confessed that he was an atheist and that she was an atheist at one point. She confessed uh, all of those things. Now, we're at the stage now where the, the man himself has not made a confession yet. He's pretending that all of this is maybe it's a conspiracy theory of some sorts. But the witness testimony is there. And what he doesn't know is that we actually saw a video of him making a confession, but it was, it was privately filmed that he was an atheist at one point you actually saw the so, video yeah, we saw that we saw we we're not allowed to actually bring that video out but we saw the video and we have witness testimony and his wife confessed in fact both of them did because he had more than one wife and and that's another masala which we don't want to go into like you know how he treated his wives and what kind of relationship he went into that's not with the public benefit it can help us with this inshallah is number one the, the idea of idolizing public figures, right, and people on Instagram and things like that. So that because a lot of people were affected in terms of iman by this, and number two in terms of giving your charity and zakat to reputable sources. Uh, number three, you have the masala of uh, individuals that come out on YouTube just because they wear, wear certain clothes. You know that they pretend to be uh, Muslims at one point. They were not Muslims. We know that for sure. And we also saw some of the text messages between themselves. And the stuff that they were saying, they were very excited when they converted people outside of Islam. So they were doing da'wah kufriya, they were trying to bring people out of Islam. And they were, they were happy to look like Muslims and do that. And the text messages showed that, you know, what basically one wife was saying to another wife, you know, uh, is she Muslim yet? Yeah, you know, make her disbeliever, make her kafir. You know, and then uh, bring out shubuhat. So they started bringing out shubuhat from different... Um, anti-Islamic websites and they said okay well how can you believe a religion like this how can you believe like that and at the end of it you know the woman became an atheist the third wife became an atheist so they pushed her to become an atheist and so on and so forth and that's at least what was communicated in the in the messages we saw and so they were happy to see the conversion of Muslims into atheists and so and they, and they were happy to do that not just within the circle but outside as well so it looked like that there was a consorted effort to destroy Islam from within and they were playing that game, wearing our clothes, you know, speak, and, and, and using our, using that infiltration tactic in order to misguide people. And one thing that made me think about a lot was the verses in the Quran about the munafiqun, about all of those verses that Allah does tahdir, He warns us of the munafiqun and how the munafiqun are very dangerous individuals, and as a result, they'll be given such painful punishment.
So that's pretty much that's pretty much the summary of the events. That's very tragic. <laughs> Man, this this, this yeah, is like you can't make this stuff up. This is yeah, like you know. Yeah, that's that's very sad, but. Uh, that shows also the naiveness of of the Muslim community. That you know, yes. uh, you know, like they say, it takes two to tango. You know, you, you know, you, you you got the community ready to receive these guys and compliment them, and yeah, it, it's it's very sad, very sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So where Shay, where do we you hear you hear what's going on now? This is something that I mean it surprises so many people out there. You know, where do you go from here? How how do you what benefits from what you've heard? What benefits can we derive? For, first of all, this is a phenomenon in the Muslim world. It's uh, a phenomenon, huh? Yeah. I I just, you know, returned from Egypt uh, yesterday and you know, I I happened to just uh, s go through some of the TV channels. And you see that Al Alim al Rawhani, this spiritual scholar coming from this country, is coming to heal you. And so it, it is not something that is, uh, you know, exclusive to those individuals. This is actually something that is uh, widespread in the Muslim world. And um, there are two verses in Surah Al Baqarah. Uh, one of them actually, uh, it's called Ayat al Sihr, the verse. Uh, pertaining to witchcraft or sorcery, which is verse number 102, 102. Uh, just uh, read the context of those two verses. Uh, and when a messenger came from Allah to teach them uh, aspects of the unseen and how they deal with it basically and and he is confirming what came before it. They turned him down. They, so instead of following the revelation, they went after the witchcraft and, and the magic and, and, and all that stuff. The point I'm trying to make is the main cause of this in the Muslim world is ignorance, not knowing. Uh, you know, uh, what those people are getting themselves into. Uh, whether it is uh, the individuals who uh, exercise the incantation, the ruqya, or the people who receive them well and, you know, and, and, and give them, uh, you know, money and, and, and pay them and, and all of that. And, and the knowledge here, uh, which is, there is a, a drought in the Muslim world regarding this knowledge, the knowledge of Tawheed. Because this subject, uh, it, it is very interesting, you know, the, the subject of Ruqya and, and, and all of this. There is a very thin thread that takes you into Tawheed and takes you into Shirk. It's, it's you know, the, the belief. The moment that, you know, if, if, if I go to Eddie and ask him to do Ruqya on me, if I believe Eddie is the one, it's over. That's Shirk. If I believe whatever Eddie says, is what will do it, what will cure, is done. It's, it's history. Uh, and that takes a person who has knowledge of Tawheed. And also, um, you know, the individuals who do this, normally they are after money. You know, if, uh, listen, if those people can, can do supernatural, m miraculous things like speaking to the jinn and all of this, why, why they are taking your $300 or $100? Why, why they are after your own money? So. Uh, uh, those people are after the money and after the status, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is why they end up, um, you know, uh, selling out uh, everything that they have uh, for, for, for worldly gains yeah. and, and so forth. How, how, do, how do you now look uh, for someone else? Because I, I heard, hey, is this correct, uh, Muhammad Hijab, that the individual, the individual Hassanat, he actually did a, a video, a live stream saying that he's coming out now soon and just hold your horses. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. And in that video, it was quite a creepy video because he was just showing off. Everyone wants to hear him uh, talk about the allegations in response to the allegations. His wife already confessed. Actually, both of them. He has two wives that we know of. He's actually got more than that. But they both came out and confessed to the atheism charges, to the apostasy charges, to the coercion charge, all that stuff. But he's come out and basically, you know, he's, he's showing off about the numbers of people that are coming in to view his uh, videos, uh, to, to view the live stream. So it was a very creepy uh, kind of uh, uh, session, a live streaming session. And uh, it showed like, you see kind of, like the, 
the evil intent of this man, the, the lack of remorse, no repentance. Is it? I mean, at least when his wives came out, they came out crying. They came out crying saying, you know, apologize. And it shows, subhanAllah, as the Sheikh said, you know, uh, you know, there is a, there is some some speculation that when he apostated, he was playing with Sheikh himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran, uh, You know, that whoever buys this thing, Sihra, and plays with it, then he doesn't have a, part, a portion of the hereafter. So, you know, it's a very dangerous thing to be dealing with the jinn and to be in that industry. And Allah alam, some people are saying that the reason for his apostasy, which he admits, I don't know if he admits to it, but at least his wives admit to his apostasy at one point. Whether he came back or not, we don't know. But the reason why is because he immersed himself in in in, in the alam al jinn and these things and playing with these, and it was a very dangerous thing for him to do. And so Allah alam, how he came out, but you know the the way he kind of presented himself in that live stream, it showed evil intent. It showed lack of remorse, lack of. Re- it was creepy. I mean, he was <laughs> laughing, smiling, making jokes. You know, talking about how famous he is. Or showing off about how many people are watching him on live stream. It's not the time for that. People are making serious accusations. How, how, how do we shake when you hear all of this? How do you receive someone? Because we know Allah SWT is the most uh, merciful. The, someone comes back and let's say uh, there, there's a couple possibilities. Someone comes back and says, look, I made a mistake. Like, you know, and, 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 and now how do you receive someone? How do, how do you deal with this uh, from here? First, let me, uh, even though uh, Muhammad, brother Muhammad mentioned uh, part of the verse, but let me just validate uh, what he said from the sunnah. Uh, there is an authentic hadith of Sahih Bukhari that one night the Prophet وسلم, was praying tahajjud and uh, 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 there was a jinni actually who was trying to disturb his serenity and, and, and khushua, presence of the heart and mind in the salah and he actually caught the jinni and he felt the witness uh, of the uh, tongue in, in his hand. And uh, he immediately, uh, uh, you know, let the jinni go and, and released him. And he said, has it been for the invocations and the supplications of my brother Sulaiman, I would have uh, brought the jinni tomorrow uh, in the morning and tied him to one of the pillars of the masjid. And I let the kids in Medina play with him, have, have a good time with the jinni. So the point here is, what is the supplication of, bro- of, of, the, of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam? Prophet Sulaiman made a supplication in a chapter called Sa'd. Uh, oh Allah, bestow upon me a dominion, a, a kingship, power that no one else is entitled after me. And that power is the jinn being subdued to that person, to, to Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam. Uh, you see, any smart person who is in that field can subdue the jinn to his service but you need to understand the price he has to pay is islam is tawheed he must disbelieve in allah in action and actually the jinn would require that person to come up with an act which is really weird like taking the quran into the bathroom like staining the quran with blood and we we need all of this so it is possible for individuals, I, I don't know that individual Hasanat or whoever it is, uh, exactly what he did, but it is possible uh, for individual like for people like those to uh, get into that field of, of sorcery and jinn and using the jinn, but the price they have to pay is they have to disbelieve. The jinn is not going to serve someone without that compromise. The only one whom they serve they served without this compromise was Prophet Sulaiman salam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subdued the jinn to him. So this is clear. Now, uh, that's very, very insightful. Yeah, yeah, so, like, that's very insightful. So the yeah, Prophet, Sheikh, I, have, I have a question. I have a question, Sheikh, mm-hmm. and that's okay if I ask. Because one question that I think um, I wanted to actually get someone to, to do something on this, and, uh, yani, alhamdulillah, that you're here, is about Ruq al-Shari'a itself because some people they think that they must go to Iraqi, that's like you said before, you were alluding to it before, that the only way that they can be saved is through the Ruqya of Iraqi. So, what is the prophetic way, the way of the Sunnah, 
that one can just do ruqya to themselves. How does one do ruqya to themselves? Well, let, let me just, um, you know, uh, Muhammad, I, I, I had a series in, in, on YouTube called The World of Jinns and Devils. Uh, and, and somehow is, is getting some, you know, viewers out there. And a lot of the people, they think because I spoke about the subject, then I'm a good Raqi. So they call me from uh, different parts of, 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 of the country and sometimes the world actually asking me to do ruqya on them. The first thing that I tell them, you know that request that you just made, uh, if it is not in the right context, you have excluded yourself from the 70,000, they could be more by the way, who will enter Jannah without reckoning, without punishment. You know there is a famous hadith, hadith Anas, fi, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, uh, I was made uridat al umam. I was made uh, to see the nations following their messengers and prophets in their way to Jannah. A beautiful hadith, but I just want to get to the point of reference here. Then I saw a huge gathering, Sawadun Azim. I said to Jibreel, this is my ummah. He said, no, this, those are the followers of Musa. But now at the time of Musa, yani not the followers of Musa now, yani the people who followed Musa when Musa was a prophet, alayhi salam. Uh, then the Prophet ﷺ said to uh, uh, Jibreel ﷺ said to the Prophet, look here and look here and look here. This is your ummah. This is your ummah. Th there are more than that. And with them there are 70,000 who will enter Jannah without punishment, without reckoning. First, the first, uh, 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 basically the first delegation of Muslims who will be admitted into Jannah. Subhanallah, the Prophet ﷺ got called in. Uh, I know that you know the hadith hijab, but uh, just for the sake of the viewers to, to know what we're talking about. The no, it's a good reminder for me as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the Prophet, Prophet ﷺ was, was called in and, and, and then the companions got so much occupied. Who are those people? Because they really wanted to be, you know, amongst them. And, and look, at, look at the humility and the humbleness of that generation, that blessed generation. They excluded themselves. They actually started saying, those are the people probably who are born into Islam, never experienced shirk like us. We came from shirk into Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ returned and he asked them, what are you discussing? And they said, we're trying to figure out who are those 70,000, Ya Rasulullah, who will enter Jannah without reckoning and without punishment. He mentioned four things. Number one, هُمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ I'll translate this. وَلَا يَكْتَوُونَ وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Basically, those who have 100% tawakkul, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, sometimes seeking the ruqya, yastarqoon here, if you actually analyze this hadith, we read in Sahih al-Bukhari, Aisha herself says that when the Prophet would go to sleep, he would read the ruqya on himself. He would recite, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Look at this now. And when he would get ill, sick, he would ask me to recite the ruqya on him. So how do you reconcile the two here? You see, when you call that shaykh and tell shaykh, you do the ruqya right there, then you're having already um, uh, some sort of believe that this person can benefit and harm it has nothing to do anymore with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why by the way uh, read the, the 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 story of the boy and the king hadith uh, suhaib al-rumi uh, the story of of al -Ukhdud. what this boy you know this boy after he killed the, the boy when he killed the, the the animal and 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 he started receiving this reputation imagine like these guys who have this youtube and and instagram like you said half a million and all this. i mean his name circulated around the kingdom that this guy cures the, the the first person who came to him if you read the hadith carefully was a blind person who used to sit with the king he brought to him silver and gold and he said to him Ma ha huna laka ajma. i brought all of this for you in anta shafaytani, look at this now. If you cures me, if you cure you, cure me. Look at the boy. This is how a raqi should be now. This is how a raqi should be. First of all, this raqi did not spread his name around. His name got around. I am against a raqi who goes around and and off and and, and show the ruqya online and 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 show that is that is you're calling people to you. You shouldn't do this. People should contact you. And now, before you even offer help to those people, do like this young man who, who did it listen i cure nobody 
ولكن الله يشفي الله is the one who cures إدي الله is the one who cures فإن أنت آمنت بالله if you believe in Allah right here سألت الله I will ask Allah I will invoke Allah سبحانه وتعالى I will supplicate to Allah to cure you and if Allah wills He will cure you you see that's 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 the culture the proper culture of ruqya but to answer your question the ideal is to recite ruqya on yourself to recite ruqya on yourself i have a big issue with a man going with a woman inside the room and reciting ruqya on her so many times this have been asked of me i said i don't do this sister ask your husband to do it do you have a father ask your father to do it yeah so all of these things you know and 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 money getting into the process and and the whole thing and fame you know instagram and viewers and and all of this all of this makes it very ambiguous uh, unclear um and and my advice my advice always you know that you know uh, uh, when you when you get that phone call can you do a ruqya you know the first question that I ask this individual is what? Do you pray five times a day? Normally the answer is no. 99.9 .9 is no. My ruqya is not going to do anything to you. It's going to help you for a half hour and then you're going to go back. Why don't you start praying and then we'll talk about the ruqya. You know, so all of these things, you know, if, if the person's interest is really to help the community, all, all of these elements and variables have to be taken into consideration. Not just ruqya and fame and money and all of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what do you guys now, from, from that perspective, coming from London, what, what, are, what is the community doing where the person comes out from what you're saying? doesn't seem like the person's remorseful, regretful. They're pl plotting to put some kind of uh, explanation together. How do you receive that when that comes out? There's going to be a group. Now the, the, the followers, there's people love the suspense, this drama, right? So it's like Allah exposes something, and now uh, what's the preparation when the pe people come out uh, the receiving? There's two ways you can go. The person is regretful, uh, the, the young made a mistake, uh, you don't trust them again, but how do you, that's the two-point question. How do you receive them if they're remorseful or they're regretful? And then the other thing is if they come out now and they're just like, hey, making this excuse and that excuse, how do you handle it from both from there in London? What are the, what are the scholars, are they talking about it? What, what are they saying? And what do you, what do you think? What do you guys... Uh, just, just for me to finish and then Mohammed maybe can take on from there. Uh, listen, I don't know this person, uh, quite frankly. And the only time I learned about it when you, you know, sent me that information and you yeah. told me you're coming to Chicago, can we talk about this? I said, you know, I, that's when I... I actually looked at the, he, he referred to the video of the sister uh, who was crying and uh, the wife and, and, and so forth. Normally, I tell you something, uh, uh, when an individual gets into that field and there is much asset to lose, and I'm talking in general now, I'm not even talking about Hassanat, there is so much to lose for this guy if, if he is, you know, it's going to take a, a real man you know to, to because normally if if you commit a sin in public if you inflict harm in public you have to come in public and do it mm -hmm. you see that remorse and, and repentance between you and Allah only applies to somebody who committed a sin in a closed room without you know this thing is famous now so he's going to have to come out and 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 if if he wants to but now, should we give him the opportunity? Absolutely. And I, I think we should be, you know, soft. You know, لا تعين الشيطان على أخيكم Like the, the Prophet said to one of his companions at one time. Do not help the jinn. He's already into the jinn. You know, <laughs> business of the jinn. Don't help the jinn against the guy. I think we, we need to be a little bit maybe, you know, uh, compassionate in the sense of, come on, man. I mean... Uh, your akhirah is like uh, Brother Muhammad mentioned. Wa ma lahum fil akhirati min khalaq. Your akhirah is at stake here. Come on, let's let's help you here with you know why didn't I think we need to open that uh, and wait and see what will happen. Your your comments on it? For us, from our perspective, um, there's public outrage in the Muslim community because of the charity funds. I think that's one of the main reasons, right? So. Uh, People are demanding he give an explanation. He has, he has yet to give any explanation on that. Because it's, it's, it's a matter. Like, you know, he had this amount of giving the cat to certain people. Um, so that, that angle of it, people are like inflamed with anger. 
But yeah, in terms of the anger of coming back and doing rujua and doing tawbah and things like that and coming back to Islam, uh, you know, he'll he, he'll need to make repentance first. The issue is that he's not even making repentance. He's not even coming out and saying, you know, I'm sorry I was wrong and these issues. And so I think the first step for him is if he does come with that, I think the Muslim community here in the UK are, are very forgiving, but his wives did that, to be fair, and they kind of deleted their accounts or deleted all of their posts on Instagram, but he's making fun of everyone and, and, and he's acting arrogantly. And, and when you act arrogantly, it's very difficult to break your arrogance uh, like that. And he, he's, he's known for the arrogance, in fact, you know. Uh, according to his wives, he's, he, you know, He's known for that. He's known for that. He will never step down from his position, which is very difficult to get someone who's like that to come and apologize and confess and you know make public repentance and stuff like that. And there's so much he has to make public repentance for. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I really do appreciate the chef's input here because I think a lot of people, especially with there's a rocket industry here in the UK, right? And there's there are genuine people. There are people who are mashayikh and who who do it like in the ways that the chef mentioned. You know, they don't really, sometimes they can charge money or something like that, but it's not, they're not exploiting anyone or whatever. I mean, there are lots of masa'il that, I, you know, I think the Muslim community needs to be educated on. One of them is uh, the question of taking money for Rukhya. I mean, what is the hukm of that? Is it halal? Is it, is it haram? Is it, what is, what is that? Number two, like you've already said before, you know, we talked about doing Rukhya to yourself. But what if the person does not know how to read the Quran, for example? He doesn't know... Uh, even he does not have to speak in the Arabic and or read the Arabic language or anything. He doesn't know how to pronounce the Quran. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is, uh, you kind of alluded to it with the lifestyle, like praying five times a day. But is there anything particular in terms of adhkar and afal um, that the person adaya that they can do, dua supplication that they can do on a daily basis that protects them from sihr and that protects them from the evil eye? So. Um, so that they can incorporate that into their life. I think that education is so important for the Muslim community. So the first, the first uh, point that uh, Brother Muhammad made, uh, the uh, foundation for this uh, famous hadith, which is I'm certain you, you, you heard of it and you know it, both of you, but just for the sake of the viewers, Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, Fi Sahih Imam al-Bukhari, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent uh, a delegation of companions to execute some work. In their way back, they passed by uh, a tribe, uh, and it seems like the tribe, uh, the tribe, uh, uh, the, the people of that tribe was uh, were very stingy. Uh, they actually asked them for food. They refused to give them food. Uh, so uh, the uh, Sayyid al Hay, the uh, head of the tribe, the, uh, got stung by a scorpion, and they tried to uh, cure him with with all, uh, you know, uh, uh, types uh, of cure that they are familiar with, but at the end, the man was about to die. So they said, let's go to these Arabs and, and see if they can help us out. So uh, uh, Abi Sa'id, uh, basically, he was the head of that delegation. He said, uh, we're not going to cure you. I'm not going to come and read the ruqya on you unless you guys pay us something. So uh, uh, right here, you're, you're, you're dealing with stingy people who actually refuse. And, uh, you know, uh, generosity is an Arab thing in, in, uh, at the time. And, and that three days is uh, something that actually urf wise. So they refuse to give them al-qira or, or food, you know. To, so you're talking about people who are, uh, you know, stingy. And a lot of the scholars said those people were not Muslims. A lot of the scholars of hadith, they said those people were not Muslims. So th those are two. So basically you're asking a wage from someone who is not a Muslim. Also, uh, uh, the, the, the asking for the wage was contingent upon the cure, not just doing the ruqya. So a lot of us, when we read that hadith, we have to be very careful because taratu shifa. You see, Abi Sa'id went and he recited al-Fatiha on the individual. فَكَأَنَّمَا حُلَّ مِنْ عِقَالِ Like a camel who was tied, and, and you see how a camel stands up. The, the guy just stood up like nothing wrong with him. So uh, is the, uh, the cure uh, a condition to receive the wage or not? This is something that is debatable among the scholars. But in general, uh, if you go and do the ruqya, you should not be asking it. 
you should be giving it as a gift and you take it like they say without istishraf in nafs like you know you're uh, okay jazakallah khair and, and, and you go yeah. that's how it, but it shouldn't become a business it shouldn't become a fee a wage you see that's where you're stepping like I said there are you see all, also if you if you read this hadith carefully Abu Sa'id you need to understand this there is no such a thing ruqya shara'iya in the sense of 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 certain things that you have to recite there is no such a thing show me evidence for it. there is no such a thing وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ All of the Qur'an is a ruqya. All of the Qur'an is a ruqya. You need to understand. Anything that you recite from the Qur'an is a ruqya. Yeah, ayat al-tawheed, ayat al-kursi, the last two verses. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Yeah, they have a lot of impact. The names of Allah, they have a lot of impact. But you see, when Abu Sa'id went and sat next to this leader of the tribe, you know, Abu Sa'id believes that all of the Qur'an cures. So when he sat next to the person, what is the first thing that comes out of, spring out of your mind when, uh, you know, when, when you think of the Quran? Surah Al-Fatiha, he recited Al-Fatiha. That is why when he went back to the Prophet ﷺ, because they refused, by the way, to accept the wage. They refused to, to do anything with, 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 with the, with the jual, the, the price they got, until they go back to the Prophet. You know, one of the first things that the Prophet said to Abu Sa'id, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ أَنَّهَا رُقِيَةً How did you know that Al-Fatiha is, uh, is a ruqya? Uh, so, uh, in a way, that's the attitude of the raqi. You recite the Qur'an and your intention is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure. So, uh, the, to, to answer the question in, 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 in brief here, it is permissible. But I shouldn't make... Uh, uh, and, and what if somebody is unable to... to uh, uh, to to pay will you uh, uh, you know refrain from helping the the muslim and it shouldn't become a business it shouldn't become of that nature yes absolutely if somebody is unable to recite the ruqya on themselves yeah they can go ahead and ask uh, another person but be careful when you ask another person and it's really going to take the other person if the person doesn't know to begin with how to recite the ruqya you think they know about tawheed they know about who allah is they know what shirk is you know, they, they don't know. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to uh, Malik al-Ajshai, al-Ajshai, a'ridu alayya ruqakum, fa inna minha al-shirk. Present your ruqya to me. What are you reciting exactly? So if the person doesn't know how to recite the ruqya on themselves, do you think they know tawheed? Now it's going to take the raqi now. The, what, what is your issue? Okay, do you believe in Allah? Yeah. You see, and, and that is why it's a condition uh, uh, for that raqi actually to verify that person. Why are you approaching me? You think I have some uh, uh, divinity about me here now or, or what? What it is? You see, this is, this is what, what led Muslims astray. One of the gates to misguidance that you start praising. And I don't know what's the, the word here. You, you're giving the people, uh, you know, oh, this guy, he does it. Oh, this, that's very dangerous. extreme adulation yes uh, uh, ideology you know making some turning somebody into an idol yeah now it's going to take that person to stop this and, and, and I'll, I'll share with you uh, a story if you allow me Fisal Imam Muslim the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Anas is the narrator of the hadith Rubba Ash'ath Aghbar Madduut Imrayni Madfu'un Bil Abwa'a Maybe somebody who is disheveled, you know, dusted. Dutim Brain wearing two old garments. Matfu'an bil abwab when he knocks on the door of knock, 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 open, get out of here. Who's this guy? He's basically insignificant, yeah. But imagine this. Law aqsama ala Allah la abarra. But if he takes an oath on Allah, Allah will fulfill his oath. Imagine this. Oh Allah, I'm taking an oath on you that you give Eddie, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jannah, mm -hmm. Ya Rab. Imagine, Allah will fulfill that person's oath because of his status. Imagine this. That's a karama. That's, you know. The Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith, he named the brother, half-brother of Anas. His name is Al-Bara. وَمِنْهُمُ الْبَرَاءُ بْنُ Malik. Who heard this hadith? Handful of people. Not many people, not many people know about this, about this, about uh, uh, Al-Bara, uh, Anas's half-brother status, that he actually can take an oath on Allah and Allah can fulfill his oath. 
few people. The Prophet ﷺ died, years passed by. The Muslims were invading uh, uh, a stronghold in Persia called Tustar. And they were suffering. A lot of them were killed because that fortress was really a uh, stronghold and, and they couldn't break through because it, it, it was behind water and every day Muslims are killed. So some of the people came to the leader of this army and he said, why are we suffering? We have this man in our army. If he makes dua, if he calls upon Allah, the pro I heard the prophet saying about him, this about him, we're going to break through. So the leader of the army called upon uh, Al-Bara'a said, come here Al-Bara, why don't you make dua for us? We see us getting killed every day. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. He refused to do it. Mm. Again, then Al-Bara, every day he would see Muslims being killed. Then he finally agreed. He said, okay, I'm going to do it. Look, the dua that he made, oh Allah, I'm taking an oath on you that you show us the back of our enemies tomorrow and I die as a shaheed. I go. Why? Because the people of the army now, instead of relying upon Allah, they're going to go to who? It's too much now. Uh, you, you, you know, the, so uh, individuals like those, they must have strong tawheed. The same exact thing, you know, and he actually died. When you reach that status, that you're able to cure people like this, yeah. your level of Tawheed has to what? To grow, grow, rise. grow up and be careful. Because you don't want to become a Tawhut. Who is a Tawhut? Someone who is worshipped beside Allah uh, 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 while he wants that. Yeah. Wanting that. You know, uh, uh, take, take for example the same exact scenario in the story of, of uh, Uwais al-Qarni. Imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you look at the credential of Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, uh, you know, uh, Umar was asked to check every season of Hajj and look for a man coming from Yemen whose name is Uwais. Yeah, so can you, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear for a bit there. Yeah. The, the, the sound cut off. Yeah, yeah we, we're right in the middle of a, of a, of a story he's narrating regarding can, can you can you share it with him quickly? Go, go, go ahead. Well, I was telling the story mm -hmm. of Al-Bara ibn Malik. You know, again, like I, I go back to this principle. You see, if you're dealing with somebody, uh, Muhammad, who doesn't yeah. know how to, to recite, recite the Ruqya, uh, you know, yes. then it's going to take you as a Raqi to, to, to draw the boundary, yes. to, 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 to draw yes. the boundary. Because you don't want yes. the people to... to, 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 to um, basically to, to, to rely upon you instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I was sharing with, with Brother Eddie the, uh, and the viewers the story of, of, of Al-Bara ibn Malik. One day the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if there, there is somebody, if he takes an oath on Allah, who is insignificant, significant looking, رُبَّ أَشْعَثْ أَغْبَرْ طُوطِ مْرَيْنِ مَدْفُوعٌ بِالْأَبْوَابِ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَأَبَرْ And one of them is Al-Bara ibn Malik, the half-brother of Anas. The Prophet died. Only a handful of people heard this hadith. Only a handful of people know this about Al-Bara. The Prophet ﷺ died years, something like that, 24 after Hijrah. The Muslims were trying to break into one of the strongholds in Persia. And every day they are getting killed. For six months, they've been trying to go through. So one of the people came to the leader of the army and said, We have this man in our army. If he calls upon Allah, if he takes an oath on Allah, Allah is going to give us what we want. Why are we going through this? The leader of the army begged al -Bara. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. After three days, he agreed. Look at his dua, Muhammad. Oh Allah, I'm taking an oath on you that we see the back of our enemies tomorrow, meaning we chase them. And I die as a shaheed. I want to die now. Now the word is going to get out that now, instead of people relying upon Allah, the reliance upon who? So, so that that's one of the major things we can take from this. One yeah. of the main things is reliance on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Clear reliance on Allah. There cannot be any kind of on offense on this. You see, the same exact thing we understand from the story of Umar and Uwais. Imagine Umar was asked to look for someone from Yemen who was not a companion. 
Ya Umar, if you find this man, ask him to ask Allah to forgive you. <laughs> Imagine this. Imagine, Umar is a companion. If there is a prophet after, the prophet would be Umar. If shaitan sees Umar, he will run away from Umar. You understand this? Yeah. Uh, Umar, find, finally, he finds the man. Finds Uwais. He finds him. I said, uh, you know what Uwais asked Umar? He said, what can I do for you? Listen, I'm going to Iraq, please. Don't let anybody know about me. I want to disappear. You understand? So, uh, uh, well, the scholars, they differentiate between Mu'ajizah to Nabi, Rasul, wa karamah to Wali. The Mu'ajizah, the miracle of a messenger, a messenger must dis disclose his, his, his miracle because that's what establishes that he receives divine mm -hmm. revelation. But a person with a status, with Allah, that you can actually kick out the jinn from somebody's body. This is a karama. This is, you have connection with the unseen. You gotta be extremely careful, extremely careful, 100% careful. You so cannot you use this for the dunya. You cannot make it into a business and you cannot be a cause for people to go astray because of you. That's so the, the so, the, so the, this can be a gift from Allah yeah. to the to the Raqi, not anybody but he's it. making it clear, this is not for me, this is from Allah. He's got to make that really clear like constantly. Like I mentioned with, the boy in the story yeah. of the trench. Let, Just go and read uh, Hadith Suhaib. Uh, before yeah. we cut out, a few more things. Uh, uh, so what do you guys think about, you know, people are bringing up this whole thing about sharing, sharing, uh, your family on social media, specifically your wife for likes, you know, putting this out this there. This is by itself a criteria that this person has no clue, you know, about what. what Do you understand the question? <laughs> yes. And then, and then we're. Uh, yeah, so I was connected to the evil eye. Yeah. You hear what he said? Absolutely, yeah. I, I really have issue with because we used to have like in Jahalia people back in Jahalia they like to have the the trophy girlfriends right so they'd have their girlfriends they didn't have much feelings for them but then they, they even the even the person back in Jahalia then he start to get Eddie. this glida this protective Eddie. jealousy he's not Muslim Eddie. yet Eddie. but but now, every person every human being yeah. has jealousy in him yes ولكن الكريم يكتمه واللئيم يظهره but the person who has taqwa and iman will hold it okay. but the person who has you know no taqwa no iman no fear of allah will go after you you see when yusuf alayhi salam saw the dream huh, about him becoming what did the father say to them don't tell the dream to who imagine you, you know we, we we show ourselves in camera here allah knows best who watches us and that's why our shayateen and our jinn are, are very big you know they are not small uh, likewise when you go and show your wife Especially now his sh sh wife's with, with an S at the end, you know, is, is oh man, th these guys, uh, you don't do that. Your kids, you don't do this. You don't know who's watching this. You understand the question now? You can hear us, what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. You, you, don't, you don't do this as yeah, a Muslim. Yeah. Go ahead, repeat, you're breaking up? Yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. You were firing up a little bit. I can hear. I can hear. I hear the question. We well, hear you now. Now you can hear. Repeat. Repeat. Yeah. So, hello. Yeah, we were talking about. Uh, you, you, you yeah. we were talking about putting your family out there on display for likes. Yeah, absolutely. And this was one of the criticisms that was leveled against this family even before any of this came up. Um, and because you know, it, it seemed a little bit weird and. And it invited the evil eye, and, and that's, that's what the people were saying to them even before this, this controversy started. And um, and some people nowadays, we have this movement within you know, the UK and other places in the world where people are denying the evil eye. You know, they're denying the fact that envy can happen. They're denying even el iltibas al jinni or jinn possession. They deny these aspects. Then they're denying the Quran and Sunnah. Simply. Yeah, yeah, we have people that are doing denial of the Quran and Sunnah. They're mm -hmm. denying these things, and so that they can live a life of desires, and so that they can show their families. and And there's a problem as well, I believe, that's connected to social media, especially, which is to do with the khira of the man, like the protective jealousy, like that. That has come, and that, has, that has become something trivial now in liberal society, where people don't care. This khira thing has become outdated. Like, you know, Ghira is, is, is seen as against equality, in fact, from a feministic perspective. So a lot of people have left this Ghira now, aside, 
They don't mind even, like you said, Eddie, like, you know, they like to show off their, 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 their wives almost uh, trophy-like, you know, in a trophy way. You know, this is my wife, this is what she looks like. And this, subhanAllah, something which we don't talk about much in, in these discussions is the, the, uh, the, uh, the problem of the asset. Of the of the, the opposite of Vera, this individual now has lost all of his protective uh, jealousy, and he allows his wife to do these things. And this man came out to be sorry to say he's the youth because he let his wife go clubbing, you know, and and that is an extreme version of someone who is uh, as the youth, where you let your wife go out, she's clubbing, she's taking pictures with us, man. You're aware of this, and you know you're involved in other relationships. She's involved in other relationships. It's, I mean. Now this is coming into the Muslim community, and uh, and subhanAllah is something which is uh, very sickening actually. It's very sickening because it's, it's feminism or feministic narratives and equality narratives, liberal narratives, western narratives, all of those are coming together now to deny us of our ability to be uh, in line with our fitrah, in line with our predisposition. Every man, even non-Muslim people by the way, they feel like ghira is something that should come naturally, but now it's being deleted. It's being erased. It's being uh, replaced with with an attitude of carelessness, an attitude of um, liberal uh, recklessness, an attitude of, of liberty, or so-called yeah. liberty. Yeah. And so, <laughs> can you, can you touch upon this, uh, this problem, Sheikh, of of ghira, of the people that lo- they're losing their ghira, that the men especially that lost their ghira, and the yes, that which is coming about, and subhanAllah, it's penetrating our ummah as well. I mean, Ibn Hajar compiled 14 types, or I think 14 or 13, if I'm not mistaken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yandur. he compiled all these ahadith that talks about always three, three types of people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at at the Day of Judgment, or speak yes. to, or even give them any, um, uh, you know, tazkiyah, that, you know, uh, one of them is the youth. Uh, that How would you translate the youth now? The youth is someone who sees wickedness in your own family and you don't do anything about it. That one of the exactly. family the members... Closest English word, the closest English word I've seen to it is the word C-U-C-K, cuck. But that's, that's not the same exact word as uh, as the day, what the word the youth means in Arabic. It's, I don't think there's an exact translation you see, of that word. You, you see but that the those, word cuck is someone that... He doesn't care about his family doing his way, especially his, his woman, it's like his wife or something, right. doing something, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, so he has no protective jealousy. Of, uh, you have no protective jealousy, but it doesn't have to do, to do only with, with the, the big thing, fornication. Actually, whatever leads to that, you know, the way yes. that they dress, the way that they speak, the way that they act, and you see this and you don't do anything about it. You don't put a stop to that. Of course, the the the, yes. the, the, the top of, of this is is that they go wickedly around and and you're not doing anything about it. Now, not only this, you're contributing to this. You're making a show of your family. You're you, you know that 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 adds to 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 the atha that you yourself not only allowing it in in your small circle, rather you're letting it. Uh, uh, be out there in, in a social media uh, outlet or in an uh, Instagram or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so wrapping up now, uh, we we started off with trying to derive from 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 this uh, this situation that people, many people, are traumatized by this. Uh, what what gems of wisdom can we derive so we can go ahead and increase our iman instead of many people losing some people losing their iman because of this? Yeah, actually, this is knowledge. The issue has to do with knowledge, knowledge of tawheed. You see, the moment that you believe that there is someone out there who can benefit you without Allah's permission, can cause harm to come upon you without Allah's permission, forget it. Your tawheed is gone. Yeah. Your tawheed is gone. And that's why go and study tawheed, especially tawheed al rububi yeah. that any harm, any benefit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of this. Yeah. Not other people. You know, if Allah permits harm to come into you or upon you, is for a reason, yeah. you know, is, is for something that you've done wrong. You go back and study Tawheed. The subject has to do with Tawheed. 
Yeah. And, and, and the knowledge of Tawheed, unfortunately, in the Muslim Ummah, there is a drought. Very mm. few people talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll mention a couple of things, uh, and then Muhammad, you can, uh, you can uh, finish it off. What comes to my mind is that you know, the learned person is, is uh, how the Prophet ﷺ talked about is a thousand times heavier on the shaitan. Yeah. So it goes back with knowledge. Yeah. Another thing, the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ had talked about that you know, a person will do the deeds you know of the people of uh, Jannah all the way to the to the end. I'm yeah, paraphrasing, yeah, and yeah. then and then the Qadr will overtake him, and then the person pretty much be exposed. Can we relate that to this situation? That it, what's perceived on the outside, where someone reciting Quran and everything, it looks good, you know, niqab, but then they're doing these deeds that you think they're going to get you to Jannah. Then all of a sudden, boom, things get unfolded, and you're like, wow, this is like the infiltration of Shaitan at the highest level. And this makes me just increase in like, man, this can happen to any of us. We have to be on vigilant in our athqar. Right. We have to be vigilant to make sure that this is not a joke, man. This is like, is Shaitan not. is real. This stuff is happening, man. This is like, you know, you got to take your deen serious. You cannot miss a prayer. Be under wudu. Take it to the next level all the time. Make sure you're protecting your family. Don't take it as a joke. You see, this is real. You got people on the inside. They can have niqab. They can have hijab. All these things. But you, if you don't have the knowledge, like you're saying, reliance on Allah, you're gonna get taken for a ride. Absolutely. By a rocky, by this key, by that G. You're gonna be taken all over, and you're gonna end up in the club thinking you're kicking it, but you're Look, actually getting toward the hellfire. Look at the worst fitna that will occur in the face of this earth. What is the worst fitna? The dajjal. The dajjal. Yeah. Imagine some guy. His creation is defective, and in the sense he has defect. Imagine one of his eyes is done, and he claims that he's Allah, uh, and people are going to believe him. Subhanallah. <laughs> I mean, you can. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Muhammad, what what are you closing up now? Uh, finishing off, what 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 do you think we could take away? You know, for the for the you for people who are idolizing these people, and now uh, what what do you what are you seeing? Your foresight, your your um, advice. Uh, for me, it's just like not connecting yourself with anybody. You know, this, the statement of Ibn Mas'ud uh, um, rings a bell or kind of comes to mind with this discussion. When he said that if you're going to be Muqtadi and if you're going to follow someone, do so with Man uh, Qadmat, whoever had died. The, 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 the alive one, can, a fitna can happen to them. So every single person who's alive, we're not sure of their status. I mean, we could all be in a situation where we lose our faith. That's the reality of it. And we're not saying that we don't have this belief where we're guaranteed faith. We, that's why we ask Allah 17 times a day at least to guide us to the straight path. So, and there's many adai in the Quran, you know, Rabbana la tazir qurubana ba'da id hadaytana wa habalana minna dunka rahma as it says in Surah Al-Amran. You know, Allah, you know, do not misguide our hearts after you have guided us and, and, and bring forward to us, you know, mercy and so on. These are the adai, the, the supplications which I would recommend everyone uh, make regularly because we don't know. When you see people at that kind of level with such influence, apostating and going from one extreme to another, it makes us all, should make us all worried about our own faith. And so, the, the, for, for me, the advice is, and number one, it's beautiful what the Sheikh said, it's the best advice anyone can give on any masala, which is to, to learn the deen. It's the most important thing, and tawhid is the most important thing of the religion. That's, there's nothing better advice that can be given after that. But number two is, by extension, don't connect your heart with anybody. Uh, that's a lie because, you know, at the end of the day, we don't know what's going to happen to them. And if we want to connect ourselves to someone, then the best person to connect ourselves with, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, as our, our Lord, as a human being, the best person is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, uh, so following the soul of the Prophet Muhammad Allah says in the Quran if you, are, if you love Allah then follow me and Allah will love you back and number three also is the idea of like you said and this was mentioned many times in this discussion idolizing people giving them over praising it destroys them everyone praising over praising someone relying on them and these things and the reality is as Abu Bakr said in his famous Asr you know, may Allah forgive you for what you don't know about me. So there's things we don't know, like people praise us because they want someone to follow. That's the nature of human beings. But if you want to have someone to follow, follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the people who came after him. 
The Prophet said that the best people are my people, i.e. the Sahaba, the, the, the generation after that, generation after that. So you have the Prophet, then you have the Sahaba. So you should follow that order. Everyone has to follow that order. Because when you follow that order, you're protecting your heart from being destroyed and your soul from being from, from, from being corrupt. So that's my final advice, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, joining us in on this episode, bringing us up to speed. Inshallah, we can uh, all take from this, the viewers, and uh, inshallah, implement these things in our lives. Hope to see you soon, my brother. Muhammad Hijab. Jazakallah khairan. Amin wa yak. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Shukran, Shaykh. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh, as well. Alaykum as salam wa barakatuh. That's it, closing up, Shaykh. We got to go. Yes. We got to go. Jum'ah. Uh, yeah, thank you guys uh, for, for tuning in here to the Dean Show. Take that advice. Make sure reliance on Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Get to know your Dean, live your Dean, and know that Shaitan is for real and he's always on the attack. But make sure you have reliance on your creator. Get to know this Dean is so important. Don't take it as a joke. We'll see you next time. We'll see you here every week, inshallah. God willing, until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.